a somber show of support for fallen Adams County Deputy Heath Gum. A procession led his hearse from the coroner's office to the funeral home this afternoon. The 31-year-old deputy was shot to death while on a call. It was a breaking story last night at 10, and tonight we're learning more about that call, the suspect, and Heath Gum. The deputy was responding to a disturbance call near 88th and Dawson, just east of Washington. The sheriff's office says Gum chased after a suspect who then shot him. The sheriff was emotional late today, talking about his fallen deputy. I think at a time like this, it's important. <clears throat> to talk about the impact that a deputy uh, has on a community. The sheriff also shared a story about a letter a woman had sent him about her teenage son's positive experience with Deputy Gum. Kelly Worthman got to meet that mom and son, Kelly. Sounds like a fairly quick encounter, but they say it was very impactful. It forever changed how they view law enforcement, Jim. The selfless actions of Deputy Gum in this intersection changed a man's life, and he says he is truly grateful. In the middle of a busy intersection, Eric Traugut says he met a man who changed his life. He just got the whole community together. A broken wheel on his U-Haul left Eric stranded. Deputy Heath Gum was called to help and held the damaged wheel on the trailer as Eric slowly drove out of harm's way. He was literally, you know, sacrificing himself too because if that U-Haul would have tipped over when I was driving, he could have endangered, endangered himself. The selfless actions of Deputy Gum and another sergeant at the scene compelled Eric's mom to write a letter to the sheriff. They just went above and beyond, I think. Michelle says her letter was intended to share a positive message about law enforcement at a time when there seems to be so much hostility. I was raised to have respect for law enforcement. But now her words of gratitude have new meaning for the Adams County Sheriff's Office as they and the community mourn the loss of a great deputy, one who went above and beyond for others like Eric. If more police officers were to be like Deputy Gum, it would be better for our community. And Eric and Michelle both say that they are grieving Deputy Gum's death and they give their condolences to his family and his brothers and sisters in blue. They do a plan, do plan to attend his funeral. We're live in Adams County, Kelly Worthman covering Colorado First. Thanks, Kelly. There is now a growing memorial outside the sheriff's substation in Commerce City. Deputy Gum's cruiser is covered in cards and flowers. If you're interested in donating to the deputy's family, the sheriff's office encourages you to use the link on its website. After the shooting, one man was immediately taken into custody. He has 22-year-old Dreon Deering. The sheriff has asked us not to show his mugshot just yet. Daring is facing first degree murder charges and is due in court tomorrow afternoon. Sheriff says they are still looking for two other suspects who ran from the scene last night. They are not accused of taking part in the deputy's murder, but they were involved in that disturbance that promoted the original 911 call. Copter 4 flew over the massive scene last night. Neighbors had been told to lock their doors and stay inside away from windows in case there was more gunfire. And those orders were in place for almost 24 hours. Our Stan Bush live on that story. And Stan, such a scary time for those folks. I can imagine they're very relieved that the threat has passed. Uh, Jim, that neighborhood was essentially shut down all the way until late this afternoon. Dozens of homes surrounded in a manhunt and a mad scramble for answers. And we spoke with neighbors today who said that last night was life changing. We saw that someone was taken and we're realizing that's next door. That's. Lady Gardunio was still visibly shaken a day after the fatal encounter next door. My husband came running over there. My daughter came also. I grabbed the grandkids and I went downstairs because we had been told, get away from the doors, the windows. Gardunio and her family were having dinner. She believes the suspects crossed her front yard, but she didn't know anything was wrong we can't identify. until hearing police helicopters overhead. She hid in the basement with her daughter and grandchildren, an eight-year-old and a toddler. Quite, my husband went to the back door and opened it, and the full SWAT team was right there. There were long guns here. It was, it was frightening. She hadn't left the house until late this afternoon. Investigators poured through her property last night looking for the two remaining suspects. They did a couple of sweeps, it seems, through the trying to find the other two. Her family has lived on this street for a generation. 
a quiet block that for a night became the center of a nightmare. Family members thanked officers trying to return a sense of normalcy here, though many are still in shock. I just can't believe this is happening here. We saw neighbors thank officers for how they handled the incident last night. They want details on what happened and why. We're live tonight in Adams County. Stan Bush covering Colorado first. Several schools in the Mapleton and Adams 12 five-star districts were closed today as investigators were still working the area. Those schools will all be open tomorrow. They're also offering resources for families in the area who could use a little extra support right now. Well, Colorado has lost two deputies in one month. In addition to last night's murder of Deputy Heath Gum, Douglas County Deputy Zach Parrish was shot to death New Year's Eve. Well, tonight, a Back the Blue event brought people together to raise money for fallen law enforcement officers. Dominic Garcia live at the Breckenridge Brewery tonight in Littleton. Karen, that concert is over. People are packing up right now, but this was a packed house. They actually sold out, and just about everyone was wearing this shirt. It says, I back the blue, and for a lot of these people, tonight is just what they needed. The place was packed, a true testament of how Colorado is backing the blue. So it's neat seeing how the community understands that and really comes together to support law enforcement. In the middle of it all, we met Douglas County Sheriff's Deputy Jay Carnes, and for him, two deputy deaths in one month has been hard to bear. It is tough. I mean, I've been on honor guard for uh, seven years, and I was right in the midst of all the stuff during uh, uh, Zach Parrish's uh, funeral and so forth. It's, it's pretty heavy. His role will tie him to both fallen deputies. It's going to be pretty eye-opening, I think, because, uh, again, being with Honor Guard, I'm going to be going up to Adams County to help. With it's not an easy job, but it is one he does with pride. Being able to support the families through all that they're going through and show respect for their, their loss, uh, and, but uh, try to help them through uh, in the best way that we can. It hasn't been an easy week or easy month, for that matter. But for people like Deputy Jay Carnes, this showing of support is just what they needed. Just seeing how much the person in their family that was serving is supported and appreciated by the community, it really does make a difference. Tonight was pretty amazing. Now, a fund has been set up for Deputy Gum's family. If you would like to donate, we have all the information on our website at cbsdenver.com. In Middleton, Dominic Garcia, covering Colorado First. Thank you, Dominic.